So we're going to go ahead and get straight in. I ended up giving folks the minute or two that I said I would before getting started. What you see on my screen here is the Federal Student Aid website. And this is basically the website where you're going to go and you're going to create an account and you're going to use that to access the FAFSA. Now, one thing I will note is that this FAFSA is still has still not been updated for next year's school year, but pretty much year to year, the FAFSA takes in the same information. The information you see here is all going to be accurate to what the FAFSA looks like. You just literally are not allowed to submit it yet for starting college in the fall of 2023. So let's go ahead and get started. So once you log into the FAFSA, and I, I think the majority of the folks in the audience today are parents. Some of you might be students, in which case you'd press a different button, but you can come in and you basically create a FAFSA, you basically create an account at the Federal Student Aid website, which is what you can see here. And then what you can do, what you're going to do is you're going to click through to the FAFSA form and then click on, you are a parent filling out a form for the student. Now, one thing you have to be careful about is even though you're a parent filling out the form for your student, pretty much the entire FAFSA is going to ask questions to the student, right? So it's going to ask for, do you have any dependents? That means, does your child have any dependents, not you? They're going to ask, what was your income? And then when it's referring to you as the parent, it's going to ask, what was parent one's income or parent two's income or guardian's income or whatever. So just keep that in mind as you're going through the FAFSA if you're a parent who's going to fill it out on behalf of your student. You can go ahead and click on, I am a parent filling out a FAFSA form for a student. You're going to come in here. You're going to enter in your student's first name. You're going to enter in your student's last name. We're just going to use fake information for all this just because we're, of course, just trying to educate all of you about the FAFSA. Then you're going to go in and enter in student's date of birth, which can be whatever, pretty basic information, and then the student's social security number. Now, keep in mind that for the, for the FAFSA, you're going to have to enter in all this information before you're allowed to actually access the form. So you go in, you enter the student's so, uh, social security number. If a student doesn't have a social security number, you can just enter 666 in this field. You, but otherwise, pretty straightforward. You go ahead, you click in, and you enter the student's personal, basic personal information. All right. So now that we've gotten into the FAFSA, once you enter the student's information, your student is going to need to cre create a, an FSA ID, or you're going to need to create one on their behalf. You can still fill out the FAFSA without having your student's FSA ID created, but you can't actually sign the FAFSA and submit it to colleges until you have the FSA ID in place. So you're going to go ahead and click on start the 2022-2023 FAFSA form, and then you're in. The first thing you're going to do is create a save key. Again, pretty straightforward. Just pick something that you're going to remember just because this is what this specific FAFSA form is tied to. Again, a pretty straightforward exercise. You just enter that save key twice. Again, I just pick something at random here. You want to be obviously be more thoughtful than I'm being right now in terms of actually filling out this information. So the uh, <clears throat> federal government does have some resources for helping you with your FAFSA form, but you, so feel free to click through those if you need assistance with them. One thing I will say is that one of my hopes for tonight's live stream is that you're going to leave this conversation and this live stream in the Q&A, knowing enough that you don't need to use any of this, but it's there if you need it as well. There is information in terms of the basics of filling out the form. So we're going to go ahead and click through continue. 